Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I hope you're having a wonderful day, and it's that time of the week again that I get to speak to you and invite you to join me here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ tonight for service. I tell you, we're right in the midst of our jurisdictional AIMS uh, conference, and God is blessing the AIM conference. We've had some tremendous speakers thus far. I want to thank Thank God for the opening speaker, Pastor Michael Woodard, uh, this past Tuesday night, and the Lord blessed him in a mighty way. And last night, we heard from the president of our AIM uh, ministry for the jurisdiction, President uh, Bamberg, Willie J. Bamberg. And I tell you, the Lord used him on last evening. And tonight, tonight, my friends, we have special guests coming in to be with us. And that is in the person of Bishop Vincent Matthews, Bishop Vincent Matthews, Jr. He is the prelate of the South Africa jurisdiction, and he's the president of Kojic World missions. And this man of God is an evangelist, a bishop, a pastor, a leader. He preaches God's truth with power and authority. And uh, he has uh, preached, as as I mentioned, he's, his jurisdiction is in South Africa. He's in Africa often winning souls, telling people about Jesus. And the Lord is going to use him here tonight. He is one of our leading national officers. And I want to invite you, you and especially you, to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ to hear from this mighty man of God. And uh, he's going to bless you. If you've never heard him, uh, uh, you're going to be blessed by his ministry. He preaches the raw unadulterated gospel truth. And uh, I, I thank God that we are kindred in spirit. We're like-minded. We stand on the word of God. We believe the word of God. And he is an uncompromising preacher of the gospel. So I invite you to come out tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. We're in our AIM convention. And uh, uh, listen, the Lord is blessing in mighty ways. Now, before I move on, let me wish every one of you a happy Jesus Pride Month. Now, today is the 22nd of June, and we're well into Jesus Pride, and uh, we've been having a time celebrating Jesus, lifting up the Lord, and declaring that we're not going to surrender the month of June to the LBGTQ community or anyone else. The God of the Bible made the month of June, and uh, uh, I think it's wrong for the month of June to be dedicated to a lifestyle that the Bible calls an abomination. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be judgmental. I'm being scriptural. Jesus Christ died for everyone. Jesus Christ welcomes everyone. Jesus Christ wants to set everyone free. And yes, everyone is welcome to come to Jesus as they are, but no one is allowed to stay as they are. When you come to Jesus, Jesus sets you free. Jesus saves Saves us from sin. Jesus delivers us from lifestyles and everything else that's not right. He cleans us up from the inside out and from the outside in. He washes us in his blood. And there is no one, my friends, that Jesus Christ will not save and set free. He tells us the truth. And he says in his word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Freedom is not it's not freedom to do what you want or to live any way you want. It's freedom to be the person whom Christ made you to be. And that is true freedom. Jesus said, he that will save his life shall lose it. But he that will lose his life for my sake shall find it. That is, do you want to discover your true self? Do you want to discover, do you want to be the best version of yourself? Do you want to walk in um, the path that God created you to walk in? Do you, do you want to be the authentic person that the God of the Bible made you to be? Well, the answer is not to have your body mutilated. It's not to have them to put foreign uh, 
uh, hormones in your body. It's not for the guy to go get sh uh, shots of estrogen every 30 days or for the lady to get shots of testosterone every 30 days. It's not to have your uh, private parts surgically uh, uh, mutilated and butchered. It's not to have uh, uh, these things. It's not to uh, uh, be around people who is going to affirm and make you actually believe that you are a male in a female's body or a female in a male's body, but there is a path for you. There is an answer. There is a way to be the best version of yourself. And that is simply to get lost in Christ, to get lost in the scripture, to get lost in biblical Christianity. Jesus says, if you lose your life for my sake, you will find it. And I want to encourage everyone who is watching today, lose yourself in Christ. How do you do that? You might ask. Well, every part of your life that is contrary to the teachings of the God of the Bible, submit to the teachings and let that thing go. Let that part of your life go. Adjust to what Jesus said. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, he will bless you as never before. You'll have joy on the inside. People will be able to see it on the outside. As a matter of fact, you won't have to worry about what you shall eat, what you shall drink and what you shall wear. But, uh, Hey, listen, all you got to do is seek first the kingdom of heaven, develop a prayer life, get in a good Bible teaching church, get to know Jesus Christ, embrace the teachings of the gospel. And you know what? You will actually literally see your life change. That will be joy, satisfaction, that voice in your head that's speaking to you, trying to convince you that you are actually a member of the opposite sex. Um, that voice. Jesus will silence that voice, that that voice of confusion, that gender dysphoria, all of those things, the attraction to the same sex, same sex attractions. Jesus is able to deliver from all of these things. And, 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 and listen, my friends, sometimes it's easier said than done. And the truth is, most things are easier said than done, but it can be done. The Bible teaches with God, all things are possible to him that believe. You just got to be in, in a good church and be around some good people who will not affirm confusion, who will not affirm bad decisions, who will not affirm a life of going to the psychiatrist, a life of every 30 days ago or so having to take shots, a life of being a bank to some scrupulous a uh, psychologist or some scrupulous doctor, the reason why the medical community has chimed in on this transgenderism and they're trying to j drive this uh, down our throats, they want to make you a lifelong monthly giver to their business because they know that once a person gets started on that therapy, once an individual gets started uh, on the, uh, the hormone therapy and all that kind of stuff, th then you become their cash cow. Jesus wants to set you free from all of those things. And you know, I want to say to those churches out there, the pastors who don't get involved in Jesus pride, you think it's ridiculous of me. You think that we're overdoing this. Well, I have something here in my hand. And yes, I know that if you're following this ministry, you know already how we talked about the number of things that, uh, uh, of dates that are dedicated to the homosexual uh, community throughout the year. As a matter of fact, I said we ought to call it the LBGTQ year and then call it a day because they have days from January through December. But what you may not know uh, is that there's a whole lot of groups, Brother Gary, that gets neglected during the month of June. They get neglected. I have in my hand before you, and I don't have time to go through all of them, at least 102 observances in the month of June. African American Music Appreciation Month, for instance, National Safety Month, National Steakhouse Month, National Fireworks Safety Month. I mean, I got a hundred and two of them to go through. National Dairy Month, National Candy Month. 
Oh, my. Uh, listen, National Ice Tea Month. Is there anything any better than a good glass of iced tea? Praise the Lord. In the South, we heat up the iced tea and, and then put cold water in it to cool it down. We boil it. <laughs> and then put sugar in it. We boil it bitter and then put sugar in it to make it sweet and then put lemon in it to make it a little more tart and drink it. Praise God. <laughs> Listen, Country Cooking Month, National, National Soul Food Month, cornbread, uh, macaroni and cheese, sweet uh, a potato salad, a sweet potato pie, you know, soul food, kind of food that some of us, hey, I'm guilty, loves to eat. Praise God. National Frozen Yogurt Month, National Lemon Month, National Fresh Fruit, Fruit and Vegetable Month. All these people are being ignored. Look at this. National, uh, listen, Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. Uh, Idaho Wine Month. I guess the Idaho Wine people feel neglected. Uh, Turkey Lovers Month. Uh, National Papaya Month. Uh, Pelvic Organ uh, Prolapse uh, Awareness uh, Month. Prolapsis Awareness Month. And uh, National Dairy Alternative Month. And the list. Ohio Wine Month. National Homeowners Month. The list goes on and on. Uh, look at this here the way, uh, in rank number 25 of, of the listing. I don't know if it's a particular ranking, ranking, but, uh, Christianity month. <laughs> Did you know that? Christianity month, national pet preparedness month, a women's golf month, national migraine and headache awareness month, rebuild your life month. I mean, I, I'm going down the list of, uh, matter, matter of fact, Gary, we should have brought Gary, we should have brought Rocky in here and we could tune up and just begin to preach uh, ch child vision awareness month, uh, life month, national child awareness month. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on all of these days, all of these months. And listen to this. Guess what's listed in this list of 102 uh, 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 months observances for the month of June. Listed at number 51. Lesbian, I don't call them gay, bisexual, and transgender pride month. Now, would you explain to me why this one gets so much attention? National Mango Month. Uh, uh, why is it that this one gets so much attention? National Sun Safety Month. I think that's we ought to pay attention to it. Uh, so just so many uh, entrepreneurs do it yourself marketing month. And I realize I'm, I'm going a little long with this, but I'm trying to show you how backslidden our society is and how unfair it is. Cancer from the sun month. Oh my, these things, listen, listen, listen. Uh, fight the, the filth fly uh, month. Uh, uh, Gary, look at this. Am I saying this right? Uh, all of this LGBT book month. Well, they show sure pushing that one. Great outdoors month. Uh, all of these things, International Surf Music Month, um, um, Men's Health Education and Awareness Month. It goes on and on and on. How about this? National Bathroom Reading Month. I wonder what that's all about. Um, National Camping Month. All of these days, all of these observances for the month of June. You know, June don't have but, uh, what, 30, 31 days? I'm not looking at the calendar, but 30? We got 30 days, all of these observances, and who gets, who gets the lion's share? Who gets all of it? I mean, it's everywhere. It, you can't watch the news. You can't watch a sporting program. You can't watch television. You can't watch a baseball game. Oh, my, you can't hardly watch anything. And every, they're just pushing this down our throats, which is an agenda. And that is why, yours truly, I do all that I can to bring this before you and to mention it. And I want to say this, Gary, I'm going a little long, but I want to say this. Thank God there are people who appreciate 
our efforts. You know, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God for the letters that you send me. This this letter is from a viewer, and it said this. I won't give that name. I want to say thank you for bringing the word of God to bear on our cultural on our cultural context and exalting Christ in the darkness. This is our present day. Having grown up in a black church in Los Angeles, this type of preaching is rare. There truly is a famine in the land. And the pastor gives his name, which I will not give it uh, to you. This is from uh, Los Angeles, California. Uh, this particular uh, person writes and says to me, uh, this lady, she says, I am a 41-year-old woman from Kentucky. I want to thank you for speaking out against the sin of pride. I'm so uh, and she says, I'm so thankful. I, and she says, I'm so lucky. I found your sermons on YouTube. I, YouTube, I've been watching them, uh, uh, watching them. And the person talks about how they watch and follow the message. I wish I was closer so that I could attend your church. Thank you so kindly for this wonderful letter. If I read them all, we, we spent all of our time reading letters. But I want to share this. Listen to this, my friend. Friends. And this is to encourage those preachers out there who are standing on the truth, preaching the word. Don't buy the devil's lie. It says if you if you preach the truth, people are going to get mad. Everybody's going to leave your church and no one wants to hear the truth. That's a lie from the pit of hell. There are people who love God's truth. Amen. I am writing a token of thanks to you and look at this. I am writing a token of thanks to you and praise to uh, our God for letting me find the Upper Room Church of God in Christ and Bishop Patrick L. Wooden, Senior on YouTube. Bishop Wooden, your, uh, Bishop Wooden and your church has greatly blessed me, edified me, and helped me increase my faith in the Almighty way over uh, the, uh, look at this, in the almighty way over the past eight months that I've been watching, I also drove up from Augusta, Georgia, where I am from, and attended the rally in Asheville, North Carolina, with Superintendent Ronald Gates. Look at this. As Philippian, as Paul says in Philippians 1, 2 through 6, he says, I, number one, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine, uh, uh, making mention of you, uh, making request of you with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day unto now, being confident of this very thing, that he that begun a good work in you shall perform it uh, by uh, shall perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. I am certainly praying for your church, the ministry. Look at this, the happy warriors, your food pantry, your youth ministry, and Bishop Wooden's evangel evangelistic outreach. I am so thankful for your YouTube outreach, and I listen to several of Bishop Wooden's sermons uh, weekly in addition to the Sunday mornings and Thursday night Bible teachers. Keep the faith. Keep up the fight, man of God. Uh, look at this thing. Uh, may the Lord be with you daily and continue to anoint you. Thank you for this letter, Augusta, Georgia. Oh, my. Look at God. Bishop, I was raised Kojak. I had to leave due to the homosexual agenda in uh, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, he writes, I am uh, a pastor in Downey, California. I truly appreciate a Kojic bishop taking a stance on the Bible. Uh, God richly bless you. I am grateful, and I know many Kojic preachers who are taking the same stand. We are declaring God's truth with power 
and authority and thank God for you and these letters. Uh, these, they, uh, listen, keep writing us and, and, and from time to time we'll take, a, take an opportunity to just mention some of these things and to let you know how much we appreciate you. We appreciate your prayers. We appreciate your support. Keep, keep us lifted up and we're going to stand on the wall and declare God's truth. My goal is to, de- to declare God's truth to the day that I die. To declare God truth as long as he gives me strength and uh, to do so. And one of these days, my friends, we're going to all be caught up in the rapture or we're going to go to heaven and uh, we'll be raised when the trump sound and we're going to meet Jesus. We're going to see him in the air and we're going to be with the Lord. And I'm happy about that. Now, I have gone kind of long day today, but I'm excited about the service tonight. I'm going to be here, but I'm telling you, I have my cup set out. I want to hear from Bishop Matthew, Matthews, and he's, this man is a tremendous preacher for Jesus Christ, and you are going to be blessed by his ministry. People have called me Bishop Matthews 2.0. They've called Bishop Matthews Bishop Wooden 2.0. We love each other. We preach the same gospel. We preach the same way. He's an anointed man of God, and I'm honored to be able to bring him to you on this medium. If you haven't heard him before, oh, he's out there on YouTube. He has a tremendous ministry. God's using him in a mighty way. Look him up. You will see that I'm telling you the truth. He preaches the uncompromising word of God, and he's going to be here tonight. And on Friday night, during the AIM conference, yours yours truly, I will be delivering the keynote message. God has given me a message. I I want to, I, I have a word to speak to our young people. Whether it's fair or not, whether it's fair or not, kids now got to grow up faster than they had to do so, had to do in my day, my, my friends, and perhaps yours. Oh, there were times, we had time to make youthful mistakes. We had time to be silly. <laughs> we had time to be dumb and still had time to recuperate and get ourselves together. Those times have changed. I tell you who hasn't changed. The God of the Bible has it. And he has an anointing. He has a touch. There was a word from the Lord for our youth because Satan is not going to have them. They're going to serve the God of the Bible. And our goal is that um, they never say about us what they said about that generation that died uh, in the Bible. And the Bible said there arose a generation that knew not God. That was failure on the part of the previous generation. We've got to make sure our children know who the God of the Bible is. Join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for good preaching and teaching. (laughs) The AIM Conference, we're, we're in it to win it. And God is blessing us real good. And I will see you here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And to the 102, I add an observance on this list. So now I guess it's 103. Jesus Pride Month. Happy Jesus Pride.